And for people here whose first act of entering this country broke the law, treat them humanely. Treat them respectfully, but you have to go back and come back through the legal process if you're going to come at all. How do you feel and, then the seven, and then the last piece was 7000 bucks a month per migrant is what they're spending. Those same dollars can actually be used to support development that helps Americans right here at home. Well, that's Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy as he gets a haircut in a barber sh- shop on the south side of Chicago. His message to the people of the inner cities revamp government economic policies and divert migrant benefits to redirect government resources to the suffering neighborhoods like the South Side and the Windy City and to rural parts of this country where manufacturing jobs has vanished. This, as the Republican field for president, expected to grow this coming week. South Carolina Senator Tim Scott filed his campaign papers Friday and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis expected to officially throw his hat into the ring this coming week. For now, GOP presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy joins us. He's live in Florida, where he has been campaigning. Uh, Mr. Ramaswamy, good to see you. Thanks for joining us here on Fox News Live. It's good to see you, Eric. How are you? Of course. Good. Uh, why were you in the barber chair? Well, look, I wanted to go to the south side of Chicago and show up in places where Republican candidates usually don't go. Actually, it was an interesting trip for me. America first, to me, includes all Americans. And this is a community in Chicago that has been deeply frustrated by the fact that they're moving migrants, illegal migrants across the border to a community that they're not getting $7,000 a month, the people who are born live there, and yet they're spending $7,000 per person per month per migrant that they're now planning to move into South Shore High School yeah, what, in what, Chicago. How, what do they feel about that? We're seeing video now of you talking to folks in the barber shop. What did they tell you? Uh, African-Americans uh, who ha- have suffered so greatly in this country through economic imbalances, What do they tell you about the migrants that are coming into Chicago? What they said is, look, we will be all for treating people humanely. Many of them are religious, saying that as followers of Christ, we want to treat them humanely. But you have to take care of people in America first. There was a lot of opposition to the war in Ukraine, identifying all of the areas of spending where the government can spend so much money on people on the other side of the world or on migrants that come from our southern border without actually taking care of their own at home. And the thing that stood out to me, Eric, is that there are echoes of that in the America First movement in the Republican Party, but even in regions of this country, like the South Shore of Chicago, that are conventionally Democrat, that are saying the same thing. It actually gave me hope to say that we can find unity around putting our country first, the interests of Americans first. That transcends political boundaries. And the other lesson I learned, Eric, is that we as Republicans need to show up. I can't tell you the outpour of support that I got from that community just for having the courage to actually go be part of the community for a day. And we didn't agree on everything, but I will tell you that people left with a sense of hope. I left with a sense of hope. And I hope that's something that my fellow GOP contenders in this race do show up in the inner city, show up in the places we don't go. One of the next trips we'll be making, Eric, is to Kensington, Pennsylvania, outside of Philadelphia, Mm -hmm. where even many police officers don't show up when they're supposed to. And I think this is going to be a good message for us heading into 2024. You, you are doing something that it seemingly hasn't been done in a long time, in a generation. Let me show you. 1980, President Ronald Reagan shocked New Yorkers and the nation. He went to Charlotte Street in the Bronx, in the South Bronx. There's devastation, a devastated neighborhood. Just take a look at that photo. There's the, uh, the former president campaigning. They did not expect a Republican to show up on Charlotte Street in the South Bronx, yet you are showing up in those neighborhoods. What type of reaction do you expect in Kensington when they see a Republican? Look, I think that many people that I saw in the South Shore of Chicago, certainly, they weren't thinking along the lines of partisan boundaries. They're thinking along the lines of, look, you have a government that talks a big game, Democrats that talk a big game, yet haven't done very much for those very black communities that they profess to care so much about. So one of the things that I say is we're going to walk the walk. America first means we include all Americans. The rule of law protects all Americans, whether it's the rule of law in the inner city of Chicago or the rule of law on our southern border. And, Eric, that's what this campaign for me is all about, reviving the ideals that unite us as all Americans. We have celebrated, the left in particular, our diversity and our differences so much that we forgot all the ways we are really just the same as Americans I left inspired by that trip to Chicago. I think we're going to make trips to the inner city in difficult areas across this country, places not only where Republicans don't go. In fact, many Democrats don't show up either to say that, you know what, we are all in this together. We're going to put all Americans first. 
The rule of law is part of what unites us as Americans. We're going to rediscover that rather than just celebrating our superficial skin deep diversity. That message was really resonant in that community, Eric, and I'm encouraged for the possibility. You brought up Reagan. Let's do what Reagan did in 1980. I think we can deliver a landslide election in 2024 if we actually make this about pro-American principles rather than just superficial Republican versus Democrat talking points. And meanwhile, the, can, uh, the, field, the field is going to be uh, enlarged this coming week. Uh, uh, Governor Ron DeSantis expected to announce uh, you've been critical of him. Uh, what's your view of him, of him entering the race? Well, to be clear, I've been critical of certain of his policies to draw policy contrasts. I respect his work as a governor. And the way I look at it is, competition breeds strength. So I will gladly welcome him to the race. I think the debate stage will be better off by for having more voices on there. I've drawn some specific policy contrasts. I don't think he should have legislated some of those crony capitalist privileges that Disney enjoys that he later canceled. You know, I wanted to point out that it was a wrong decision to legislate those into law. What is it? So? Well, look, I don't think that Disney should have had a special exemption from the political anti-discrimination statute that Ron DeSantis passed, saying that you can't actually discriminate based on political viewpoints unless you're Disney, which wrote a special lobbying based exemption into the law. But everyone makes mistakes. I'm not going to I'm not in this race to make personal attacks. I think we as a party need to do better about debating the what and the why. And what the, do we stand for and why do we stand for it? And I think that's going to make our party stronger. So I think if he's a strong entrant into the race. I think it's going to be good for our party, good for our movement. I still think it's going to take an outsider to actually take an drive the kind of national change we need in this country. I'm the outsider in this race, and that's what I intend to do. I was just going to say that Disney canceled a billion-dollar economic plan that they had in Orlando in reaction to the governor's policies. Talking about an outsider, 2016 uh, former President Trump at that time was, do you think that Donald Trump can win a general election, considering all the investigations, more revelations, and what's to come? So I think that no matter who the Republican nominee is, given Joe Biden's record, if we run on what it actually means to be an American, I think there's a number of Republicans who could win in the general election. My case here is not just one of electability. The case I'm making is how do we take the America first agenda to the next level? I'm in this race to take America first further than Donald Trump did, because if we're doing it based on first principles and moral authority, we can go further than if we're just doing it based on vengeance and grievance. The last Republican president to do that was Ronald Reagan. And I intend to actually bring that to the table here in this next election. And let me finally try that. Let me try that one more time before you answer the phone. Do you think former (laughs) President Trump, do you think think former President Trump can uh, can win a general election? So I think President Trump could win a general election because of how bad of Biden's record is. But I'm focused on how much more we can actually accomplish if we're doing this based on principles. I'm not just talking about putting the wall on the southern border. I think we can use the military to secure our own southern border. I'm not just talking about reforming the Department of Education. I believe when that agency should not have existed, we need to actually shut it down. So in many ways, I'm going further than Trump did. But I think we can unite the country in the process if we're doing it based on first principles. That's what I'm doing in this race. All right, Vivek Ramaswamy, who's off to uh, Kensington, uh, Pennsylvania, outside of Philadelphia, spreading his economic message. Uh, intriguing. And we'll see you up on uh, the South Bronx uh, one of these days. We'll be covering you there, too. Mr. Ramaswamy, thank you. Thank you, thank you Eric. Of course. Our th-